Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to another excellent adventure in the Let's Build That App.com channel. I really hope you're having an excellent morning or afternoon. And I'm really glad to see you yet again. Now, today's lesson, we're gonna focus on a brand new concept inside of Swift UI called View Modifiers. And this is a really useful concept to discuss. Uh, so today's video, I'll kind of go through all of the details as to how you use custom view modifiers and uh, why they are actually useful. So I have Xcode in the back, but before I dive into the code, let me go over a very simple application on the left side simulator. Uh, I'm using iPhone 11 Pro Max 13.1. We have uh, three very simple buttons in the middle, right? So continue, more details, and cancel. And if you think about how you would write this application, you can kind of see you're modifying these buttons all in some very similar ways, right? So I guess what I mean is you're providing these buttons with some kind of vertical and horizontal padding, the foreground font color of white, some kind of background color that is shared between all three of these elements, some kind of border and some kind of shadow. So these are very common things to do inside of Swift UI. And if you want to customize all three of these buttons with all these styles, you'll find yourself typing out a lot of code, right? So instead of having all this code repetition, you can eliminate that by providing custom view modifiers. So definitely a mouthful, but uh, it's actually very easy to implement. And I'll show you how to do it right now in the left side uh, Xcode editor. Okay, so let me see what I have here. Uh, I'm going to run this in the iPhone 11 Pro, which is this guy with the continue button right here. Okay, this looks pretty good to me and uh, looks like a pretty good way to start off today's video. All right, we have H tag, button, text, and continue. And let's say I want to modify this continue to look like this on the right side, right? So continue button right here. I am going to save ourselves a lot of time, but basically you want to type out some you know, custom modifiers like this. Uh, font, these are just the regular modifiers. And you can give this maybe some kind of size of 16 and maybe background of color dot blue. And then also maybe foreground color of white, right? So obviously you're going to have to modify this to whatever design that you're trying to go for. But after you run the app, this is what you'll see in the middle. Okay, now to save ourselves some time, I'm going to replicate this style on the right side by cutting all of that, uh, taking all of that code and just pasting it right here. And, you know, I'll just run the code. Uh, you can see now we have a continue button that looks something like this. All right, this is a pretty good way to draw out a button. You can see we have line 19 all the way down to line uh, 29. So 10 different lines to actually customize this button just to look like that, right? Now, if you want to provide uh, two other buttons inside of this H stack right here, uh, typically what you would do is to copy the code and maybe this says something like more, uh, more details. And on the right side, we have the cancel. And if you run it again, you'll see that you'll have to customize the background color as well. So this guy is green. Uh, let's go down, 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 down to the red. All right. Uh, let's run this guy one last time. And here we go. We have the blue, green, and cancel just like that. Okay. And, you know, like I was mentioning at the beginning of today's video, uh, we have a lot of this code repetition here. And uh, whenever you see this, this should be a red flag that you should start uh, refactoring your code somehow. Now, you can actually refactor this in a couple of different ways, but, to the, but the point of today's lesson is to utilize this concept called a custom view modifier. And what exactly is this view modifier, right? Well, I'm going to define some kind of modifier right here. So let's say uh, struct and let's call it the custom modifier. And this guy, we are going to use a view modifier. And why don't I just provide the body function like that? So I think when it auto completes, it gives you a lot of useless junk that you don't need. So instead of using the useless junk, you are going to want to use something like this. So provide this body function that returns us some kind of view. And inside of here, just a return and content. So content is this guy. And basically it's going to represent one of these text fields right here. It uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense just yet, but you see all these custom styles that I have right here. I can take all of this, right? So let's take the font padding and padding and background color of red. So let me just take all that. 
and remove the period and hit the uh, dot right here and just paste all that code. Okay, so now with this custom modifier, what I can do is for the red cancel button, right? I can just provide a dot and modifier right here and let's provide it with the custom modifier like so. And so running the code right now with our custom modifier, uh, you can see the button still looks exactly the same, but uh, instead of you know customizing this text right here with all of the code that we had before, everything is now living inside of the custom modifier struct down below. So a couple of things that you can also do is to move all this stuff into the modifier itself. So that's what I will do. Uh, make sure the actual indentation looks a little bit cleaner. And now I will run this guy again. I think I can move the font color in here as well because, you know, that's just a plain foreground color. And now you can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, this button down below is just using one single modifier instead of all the font, foreground color, and so on and so forth. Uh, this means I can do the same thing with these buttons as well. So let me just give this guy a modifier and remove all that right here. And uh, let's do the same thing for the continue button as well. Okay, uh, some problems that you can already see right off the bat here is that uh, all of the buttons are now going to use whatever is inside of the custom modifier, right? So namely, the background color of dot red is being used across all these buttons, which isn't all that great. So something else that you can do with your custom modifiers is to provide some custom initializers. So what exactly do I mean? Well, for the custom modifier right here, if you provide it with some kind of state variable, so state var and let's say background color and let it be of some kind of either some kind of color or you can just automatically set it to some kind of default value. And because I want the default value to be blue, that's just what I'll set it to. All right, now with this background color, right, what I can do with it is down here on line 52, uh, I'm going to use the background color of blue right here. Uh, running the code again, all of my buttons right now will appear blue. So the whole point of this state variable right here is so that when you provide your custom modifier, right, you can remove the paren and open it up again. You'll see background color right here. This guy, you can now say dot red and this right here is background color of dot green. So running this again, you can kind of guess what's going to happen, right? So you have blue, green and red. Now, this example on the right side, you can kind of see the more details is a little bit smaller, right? And the only thing that it's doing right here is we're changing the font size as well. So if you want to provide your custom modifier with a couple of different state variables, you can say font size, uh, let this guy be a CG float, and let's say equals 16 by default, and grab this guy and use that down here. So this code is still very new to me and I still haven't get used to typing it up. But uh, basically that's how we provide a custom font size. And let's say right here, uh, let's say font size of, uh, maybe make it really, really small with font size of eight. And because we have this as a default 16, we don't have to provide it for this one down below. And you can see the more details has shrunk down to a really, really small button right now. So this is the basic idea of using custom modifiers. Uh, some really, really, really uh, strange things that you can do with a custom modifier is you can actually load images inside of these uh, UI elements, but that's a little bit more complicated. So maybe I'll show you guys exactly how to do that in a later video. Alrighty, everybody, that is going to wrap it up for today's lesson on how to use custom view modifiers inside of the brand new Swift UI language. Uh, again, the reason why we do this is because inside of our Swift UI code, if you type out all the styling code over and over and over and over, you're going to end up with a lot of lines of code to maintain. And it's really hard to keep your code base clean if you have all this unnecessary code. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye guys.